Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. It's your girl Jazz. And I just want to show you the screen, you know, how to navigate the screen a little bit. So how do you get to the functions of your of your car? Well, first of all, this is going to be your car. Um, well, your future car, for those that don't have one. Um, you're going to open up your power cord here. This is how you're going to charge. You can open and close it here, but you can, as I've shown you in other videos, you can just tap the charging port and plug it in. Um, you can open up your trunk here. I'm going to do the front right here and you guys can hear it. So now my front is open. Okay. Um, it won't let me close it. You only can open it with the screen. But your trunk, you can open it and close it with the screen. I don't want to do that because the charging port's behind me and I don't want to mess anything up. You're going to lock your car door here. This is the, without the fob or any other key or anything like that, if you're renting it like me, the only way that you're going to be able to open the car and close the car doors as far as lock and unlock is right here. So before you leave, make sure that you lock the door. All right, so now you want to see the functionalities. You control your AC units right here. So you got temperatures for both sides for your for the driver and the passenger. This is the speed. So I'll put on full speed right here. I don't want to freeze to death, you guys. But part of the reason why I wanted to have it up on a higher speed, this right here is where the air is coming out of, believe it or not. And I showed you that because that's where this is. Where I just showed you guys and you're able to you know just like the orbit like the vents you're gonna move the vents up and down left and right you're doing that with the touch screen um, you're gonna move it up and down and you're gonna move it out or inward um, you do have heated seats with this particular vehicle and this is for the rear back here so you can control the heated seats back there as well and you guys you got a, steer a heated steering wheel I did not realize how important a heated steering wheel was until the snow apocalypse of 2020. Was it 2020? No, 2021. The snow apocalypse of 2021. Especially if you have a leather steering wheel, you realize how cold it can get. And then you're already cold from being outside, especially if you are a Texan and you don't have gloves. <laughs> so a heated steering wheel is actually a huge blessing to have, which I think, and I, again, something I think that is really cool to have. You can also set your schedule. So if you are at work in the summer, you can get easily get up 100, 110 degrees outside. So you can set it to where whenever you get off work at five o'clock, you can schedule for your car to warm up at five o'clock as soon as you walk out the door or even like four or 45. So you have 15 minutes to warm up and you're good to go. Or, you know, like I said, in the winter, whenever it's cold, you can easily set it up to turn it on and off right before you get off work or in the morning whenever you're about to leave. So that way for the ladies that are, or for the fellas that spoil their ladies, you no longer have to go out in the freezing cold yourself. You can schedule the car to do it yourself. And the best part is if you have a garage, you have an added reason why you can leave it running and have it scheduled because guess what? It's electric. Dun, dun. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about any, you know, carbon monoxide poison or anything like that. So that's a huge added benefit to it. Oh, one thing that I absolutely love, and I actually did use it myself um, as I'm packing. Um, I took my two boys with me while I was traveling, Captain Morgan and Monger, and I left them in the car a couple of times to pack or load the car, should I say. And they have this. Okay, first of all, Tesla, I have an issue with this. It's not just dogs that get in the car. You've got other animals, especially cats that love to travel. You got birds and things like that if you want to leave them in the car. And so if you are going to leave it in the car, just hit that. And if you turn off your car, so you can turn off your car and make sure that it's locked, especially if it's a rental. There's a sign that will show up. I'm not, it's not gonna let me show it because obviously it's charging right now. All right, a couple of things, let's see. How are you going to adjust your steering wheel and your mirrors, especially as a rental? You're going to hit the steering wheel button right here and you're going to use the controllers on the steering wheels and you go left and right to bring it in and out. And you go up and down to move it up and down. And you guys, I did an ASMR video on it. So you can make sure if you are into that, Maria, I know you are. So if you want to see something like that, I did that. Yes, I do think about um, things that you guys tell me, my 
loyal viewers. First of all, I appreciate y'all all. Um, so if there's, if you, if anybody or if anybody else is into ASMR and things like that, um, I'm going to start doing more of those videos. Um, just getting the Tesla, just kind of something that popped in my head, like, Hey, why not do that? So, um, I did it through car wash, um, opening and closing the door, charging different things like that. So you guys can hear the different functionalities of it. But besides that, um, let's see, you've got your standards. You also got your mirrors right here. So you're going to do, um, control it. And then of course you're going to use your knob on your steering wheel as well to adjust them. I'm not going to adjust it because, um, I like the way they are. <laughs> it's easier. It's more difficult to adjust those, especially it's in the dark. Mm -hmm. Let's see anything else I can show you guys. Um, you've got your steering wheel modes. You've got your charging, which I've already showed you guys. To fill up this car, I think I only had like 80 miles to quote unquote empty or dead battery. Guys, look at this. This is how much I'm paying. So it's probably going to be give or take $10 to charge. Um, one thing that I have learned with the charging is that even if it is a supercharger, it seems like different locations are going to charge you different rates. So even if you do you know, depending on the V1, V2, or V3, the energy flow that you're getting from your charger, regardless of how much energy you're getting to your car, it's going to cost different. So it's really no different than a gas station. So you can have one gas station that says a dollar, and then the next gas station right across the street can be a dollar ninety nine. Yes, I know these are exaggerating numbers, and we do wish those prices were true. Because yes, I still have a gas car, <laughs> so I understand the pain. <laughs> I would love to be able to pay that to fill up my car. I would love that. And I still got 10 minutes remaining. So worst case scenario, I'm spending 1050 to go from E to full. I would love that because the rest of the money is going to go towards the car payment. <laughs> Let's be realistic here. You got to give and take. So on average, they're saying that Americans are spending about $1,300 extra. They're going to spend this year on gas than they did last year. That's quite a bit. That's an extra month of rent that I can be paying, if not more. That's probably more, but anyways, that's the whole point. That's besides the point. <laughs> I know some people are like, especially in California, you're only, sp you're only spending $1,300. But you guys, it's an itty bitty teeny tiny one bedroom apartment. I'm pretty sure California's like, it's still only $1,300. <laughs> I'm gonna text this girl. I'm not going to California, so I'm not about to spend no four or $5,000 for a one bedroom apartment. <laughs> especially nothing that I'm going to own, but that's besides the point. So we're going to go ahead and get back to this. Um, there is autopilot on this car, but unfortunately the Turo owner has deactivated that, which in a way it's kind of positive because he doesn't know who's going to control the car. <laughs> and, um, based off some of the things that I've seen online with autonomous driving, it's kind of scary. So I really don't blame him too, too much, but come on now, it's Jazzy Reviews. Y'all know I'm not going to do nothing crazy, but then again, he doesn't know me either. So, <laughs> all right, so we got some of the locks. These are the lights. So how you turn off your headlights, it's currently on, which you really can't tell because there's other lights around, but you're going to turn it off. Oh, there you go. See, we've got the parking mode. We have it on. We have an auto because it knows that we're chilling right now. Um, the displays, if I want it brighter or darker, I can adjust it that way. If you need to change language, different things like that. Energy display, we need to percentage. Okay, so we're at 97% charge. So I only got a little bit longer to, left, to go, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this. Um, this is how you fold your windshield or your, your mirrors, which I don't think it's going to let me do it while it's charging. This, you guys, right here is how you control your windshield wipers. And um, I did not realize that was a video that I could do until I actually needed it. It hasn't rained in so long, so I completely blanked out on using the windshield wipers. But luckily, it rained. Thank you, heavens, for raining down on rain. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, let's see. So we got different trips. This is the odometer. So this is how many miles this entire car has had in the life of it, as far as I know, at least. <laughs> the total energy that's been used and the watts per mile. So 300 watts per mile. All right. So this trip, so it's the last trip. Oh, I should have reset. If I knew how to do that beforehand, I could have set it up so I can know how many miles I drove and to know whether I'm going to have to pay extra on Turo or not for going over my 400 miles that I'm limited to. 
there are cars on there that you can get unlimited miles, which those will probably be very beneficial, if, especially if you're a horrible driver like me and you get lost very easily and have to turn around because the GPS isn't that accurate. Okay, it's accurate, but again, I'm driving. Um, and plus, especially if you have a split decision on your turns, you can easily exit the wrong way. As far as the navigation goes, um, you can set it whether it's on silent or you have volume, control all that. These are excellent to have, especially this one right here, to avoid tolls so you don't get any additional charges. Yes, you do have to pay those if you do if you are on Toro. You will get billed for those. I'm not looking forward to that bill. Let's be realistic. I'm not looking forward to any of her bills when it comes to the Toro other than what I've already paid. So you can adjust the headlights. I'm not going to mess with anything like that because more than likely it's blocked off. Um, as far as the navigation goes, it did take me a minute to figure that out. If you want to know how to find your charging station or any local food places, when I tried to do the food places, it did not give me um, that great of an option of, you know, like fast food places the first time I used it. Just find restaurants around the hotel. I think I only found one, but when I did it on my phone to use the GPS on my phone, I found a plethora of options, regardless of whether it was fast food or sit down restaurants. But we're going to go ahead and try this out. So you can, this I'm not, I can't mess with or probably won't, but um, this is all the places that this car has been, which may or may not be my locations or not. But if you're hungry, Emma, are you going to register? Nope. Come on. I'm hungry. All right. Let's see what's around here. So it's only one place, you guys. Only one place that you're going to show me where to eat. Right here. And I'm right here. Pretty sure I'm a little shopping center area. So I'm pretty sure there are going to be um, at least one restaurant. Maybe a couple of them. That obviously I can't see right now. But um, yeah. So this is some of the locations. Now, as far as the charging station goes, I kind of did a video on that, but I'm going to go ahead and do a run through on this one as well. So you're going to hit the charging station. So this is the location that I'm about to head to, but I also need a charging. There it goes. Um, as I mentioned in my other video, where it was strictly in regarding to the charging stations, these three bolts, they're actually called V's. My guess is for voltage. So you got V1, V2, V3. And that's going to be for um, the speed of your charging stations. Um, the slowest is going to obviously be your V1 up to V3. Guys, one thing I have to stress this out so, so much. Make sure that whenever you're searching, you do not have all three of these on. Because if you do, you can easily go to a V1 and it will take hours to charge. Now, if you're willing to shop at a mall or something like that, okay, that's understandable. But if you're in a rush and you need something, you know, a quick charge, I think from, I think like about 50 to 80 miles, it took about, from the last, from the last charge that I did, I think it's about 45 minutes, which is weird because at the exact same location that I charged my car the very first time, it took me over an hour but when I did it the last time, again, at the exact same location, it took me about 45 minutes and I had less miles or I needed more of a charge than the second time around. So I think that was really weird. I don't know what happened with that, um, but I do know that you are going to get charged per kilowatt, kind of like a regular electric company. So either way, I saw to pay for it. <laughs> so whenever you make sure that you do only have the supercharging on, of course, if you can't find anything available, then of course you're going to have to move down to a V2. And last but not least is a V3 or a V1. But um, the V1 and the V2 are going to be your most common charging stations. V3 are slowly popping up. They're going to be more in the big cities versus the small little ringgitting towns, <clears throat> which I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, because like when I had to stop in Waco to charge, um, there was, I believe, maybe one supercharger in the entire city but in Austin there was significantly more um, I think I've covered everything else I hope I did so if you have any questions make sure that you drop them down below and I'll see you guys next time so stay tuned stay jazzy thanks for watching